The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the individual guests. If you're a sensitive snowflake that may get easily offended, then turn this off immediately. If you want to hear the real truth about the gun culture, then stick around. This is the Armed Citizen Podcast. What is going on, my ghost squad? Welcome to the Armed Citizen Podcast Live. This is episode number 154. Today's date is Tuesday, August 18th, 2020. And today we're going to talk about a subject that I kind of have taken for granted, I guess. And it was brought up in a comment on a video uh, a couple weeks ago. And we'll get into this in a little bit. But um, Welcome to the the live fiasco. If you're here live and you're out there in the chat, might as well go ahead and say hello. Let us know you're out there. We don't know you're out there unless you say something. If you're new to the show, new to the channel, this is your first time, then I'm sorry. And welcome to the shit show. And uh, as I like to say, welcome to the dark side. And we'll see if uh, we can do anything to maybe entertain you a little bit, hopefully educate a little bit. You never know. But uh, if you're out there and you have a question throughout the show or a comment, make sure you tag myself or anyone on the panel. We'll try to get to those questions. Can't guarantee we're going to get to them all, but we're going to definitely try to get to as many as we can. If you're watching in replay or in listening in podcast form, then go ahead and utilize the comment section. The uh, The conversation does not have to stop right here. Go ahead and utilize the comment section below. We'll, uh, we'll get those questions or comments answered as quickly as we can. So before we get going, let's bring in our, uh, our basically our quasi co-host this time uh, from the great state of Texas, the tactical virus himself. What's up, Clover? I just want to formally uh, protest the topic for tonight. I figured uh, you I'll, would. I won't say. I figured if anyone was going to protest the topic that you would and that's why i made sure that you got the link is i wanted to hear some descending comments you know um mm -hmm. no it's uh it, it's gonna be a fun one and basically this whole thing started out really was um it was on one of the old shows from like a year ago or something and uh, i got a comment i don't know a couple of weeks ago how the guy came across it i don't know maybe, who knows but he, he it was it was a show that we were talking about training basically and he made a comment was saying that do civilians really need military style training? And my initial instinct was, well, of, of course, but for me, that's just something that I guess I never really thought about and calling it military style training or tactical training is something that's, it's interesting. And, and it's kind of got me thinking, I was like, I, you know, that's, that's actually a, an intriguing question. And obviously you guys are going to know my answer. But the reasoning behind it might not be um, what people think. And so it got me thinking and all that. I said, well, that, that could be a pretty good topic. So, um, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, people are going to sit there and, and say that uh, everyone says, oh, get training, get training, get training. But we don't ever talk about what kind of training yep. and tactical training. Um, you know, is, is not always what people think tactical training is, and they don't always understand why it's important. And it has nothing to do with being, you know, John Wick or being some tactical, you know, wannabe. It, it, a lot of it is strategy, communication, and all that. So we're going to dive into all that. Um, Budget wants to know if, are you afraid that it would cure your foot hood? <laughs> not at all not one bit there's no cure for that there's no cure for that we're there's all, no cure for the we're all fuds, buddy hate to tell you but life you know no cure you, you can you can be a recovering fud you can be you know 10 years sober from being a fud whatever but it's all or you can be or and i guess if you don't fall into a current fud or recovering fud or anything like that i guess you're a, a future fud maybe it's still there, dude. It doesn't that, matter. Floodism applies, you know, exactly what you're talking about in this case, okay? If you're somebody that is only concerned with kitten up tactical whatever, you're FUD, dude. Hate, hate your luck, but you're a FUD. You're a tactical FUD, but you're a FUD. 
<laughs> the uh, so the, the interesting thing is is FFA instead of Future Farmers of America is that the Future Fuds of America? Future Fuds of America, I like it. I like you should do, you should do like a patch or something with that. Oh man, and play off their logo. Yeah, that could be kind of cool. It's like a sunflower. I can see it now. We need to do mm-hmm. that. Except the sunflower, you have the clover. Yeah, you know? yeah. I like. I it. only charge ninety five percent, so it's not that big of a deal. Sure. And what is okay? Ninety five percent of zero is, is what is that? It's still zero, but okay. you know, it, it's a principle. It's a right. principle that that you would be willing to give up ninety five percent to a buddy. You know, so right. It, it's the principle of it all. Right. Uh, let's see here. There are a couple new faces. I I, I want to go down the line and say hi to everybody because hello everybody. But there were a couple forty eight train wreck. Uh, I don't remember forty eight train wreck. So if you're still out there, hello. Uh, I don't remember that seeing that name. I, I might have just missed it in, in the past, but I don't remember that name. Um, TJ's out there as always. Um, let's see here. There was another question. Uh, Southpaw says, FUD Rona 19 for life. There you go. Okay, RJ Adams. Holy cow. All right, so we're going to start off real quick. RJ Adams says, hi, looking for the best price on AR-15 Diamondback. A friend and I want to have this AR. Can you help me on this? Good luck. I mean, good luck. I and, mean, and, 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 I'm, and we're not saying that sarcastically, un, un, no. very unfortunately, but good luck. You know, in, in normal times, in normal situations, in normal times, let's, let's say a year ago, you could find a Diamondback anywhere, depending on where you find it for – Four to five hundred dollars. That's including tax and all that. Um, now, if you're able to find one, you're probably looking at six to seven hundred dollars just for supply and demand. Um, you know, I don't know. Have you seen it at Diamondback DB anywhere lately at all? Uh, in stock? No. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't see the, any. The famous, the stock is out of stock. That's that's you know, but. Uh, yeah. Worst all Patriots says what's best you can um uh, best you can do. I mean, being serious with that question. Yeah. That's the only thing you can do is find your large, you know, your large retailers and that carry that and go in and click the get notified. And buddy, when they notify you, have it get get it get it sent to text or whatever, right? And as soon as you get that notification, you better, you know. For lack of a better term here, you better pull the trigger on it. <laughs> get over there and, and get it ordered because that's that's the only way right now you're going to get one. The 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 only other thing that you could do was um, go over to gunbroker.com and it's an online uh, marketplace. It's 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 an auction site basically that people are selling, and you can find used and new over there of anything you want. But understand, even on Grown Broker right now, um, prices are going to be inflated. Yeah, it's too much. It all depends upon how badly you want, you know, not just the Diamondback, but anything right now. It's it's prices so, are inflated, and that's that's the way it is. This is going to be unpopular, but I've been saying this about a lot mm-hmm. of things. If you're if you're just now going, oh, I want this, I need this, I got to have this, and I don't care what it is, as far as firearm related, you're late for the party. <laughs> Wait till the wait till this wave crashes and there's no longer the, the panic and the craziness and everything going on because this cycles. If you've been around this industry and you've been around this hobby and everything else for decades, you know, this it cycles wait until things come back around. But as soon as it comes back around, that's the time to make haste. Don't, don't put it off. Yeah. Learn your uh, lesson uh, from right now and, and yeah. make it happen. No doubt. South Paul says there's one on gun broker with seven days left and it's four fifty five right now. So you can say with seven days left, you're looking at at least six hundred dollars. Oh yeah. Which is overpriced for a diamondback. Mm-hmm. But right now, once again, it comes down to do you want it now? Is there a reason why you need it now? Or can you wait a little bit? And like like Clover was saying, if you can wait and let this wave, you know, uh get through there. You know, I would like to think that during Black Friday and the holiday season, you always see decent deals. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's going to be the same this year or 
what who knows i mean uh, and it's not that the people are jacking price of it. it's just the fact that you can't get anything right now and uh, i was talking yeah. to a, a couple different actual manufacturers yesterday i was talking with faxon and with black rain and there's nothing i mean they're 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 They've had such a busy year that they're playing catch up right now. They're talking, uh, they're still at this point, they're still talking six weeks lead time. Um, so even if you were able to find one now, you're probably not going to get it for a couple months. Let's just be honest. But like I said, um, they're out there. Uh, let's, let's go. Patriot was saying um, Dunham Sporting Goods had a new shipment of ARs plus $100 off. So get you, go check out Dunham's. Um, AJ says classic firearms sent on email a couple ARs on a couple of ARs last week. And uh, Patriot said he bought one this week. I think he's probably talking about one of the ones from Dunham. Uh, he bought it for five forty nine. So Dunham's got ARs out there for five forty nine. I don't know what brand. Maybe Patriot can can um, can help us out. Uh, let's see here. Now, Bud just got a pretty decent idea. Found out when they up, find out when they update the site. So yeah, I mean, you can figure out: uh, do they up? Does it automatically update at midnight, or they update it once an hour every three hours, whatever it is? If you can find out times when they update their system, which isn't difficult, um, then try to be available when they update. And if you find something like like Clover was saying, you got to act right then um, because it might be gone literally five minutes later. That's just the way it is. Yep. Um, arms list has some okay deals. Um, I want to say, what's that website? I want to say it's called like grab a gun or gun seek or not ammo seek, but grab a gun or, or something you could type in on, on that website. I'll, I'll think of it here in a minute, but you can type in whatever you're looking for and it'll give you prices from the internet that they found. Unfortunately, all of them are usually out of stock, but I want to say it's like, grab a gun or, or something like that. I, 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 I'll think of it here in a little bit. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Andrew says 700 for a cast AK pistols sold out in 10 minutes. There you go. Oh, yeah. um, I mean, hell, if you really want something, let me know. <laughs> uh, I can open up the safe if you need me to. Yeah. Um, let's see here. I did not notice I've been really quiet. I understand. Your own, your own. Mm -hmm. My stuff's not for sale. <laughs> well, everyone's got a price, you know. Uh, well, that's price. true. That this is true. This is true. And supply and demand, my friend. Supply and demand. Uh, I don't have I the extra stuff. Demand a lot of money if they want the supply. Then uh, you know, I I laid out really good in 2013. I had a lot of extra stuff that I could get rid of that I could you know I could, that I could come to part with. Uh, yeah. But right now, I mean, in this situation, I'm fine. But I just don't have you know I don't have that extra. I don't have anything that I'm really willing to part with. So it would have to be there is a number. You're right. There is a number. But uh. It would be embarrassing to say what that number is. No, I I, I understand. I'm looking to find and see if I can find that website. And I'm looking through. I, I just did a search and I can't. I can't find it. So I just got a text. So a, a friend of mine um, was uh, former Special Forces, Army Special Forces. And he's retired, he owns a, an FFL here uh, locally, and he does a lot of contracting work and training. He works for a, a training outfit that, that trains um, contractors and um, we'll just say operatives, okay? And got a text saying that they've got 4,000 rounds of nine available and um, last night. And if I wanted some, let them know. And I said, I'll take X amount. And I just, got, I just got a text and asked if I could only get 250 for now. And then if there's another 250 left after the weekend, I could do that. But um, they don't know when they'll be able to get more. And they got this through the uh, training outfit. So it's just they bought them from the training outfit at cost. And um, 
he's only able to get oh he's only able to get two thousand. I thought they were gonna get four, but he's only able to get two thousand, and that's kind of what I asked for. So they're able to get me two fifty and maybe another two fifty. So maybe maybe uh, five hundred rounds. So that's better than nothing. Better than nothing. So at least I'll be able to get maybe at least two hundred fifty, which won't last long, but it's 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 better than nothing, you know. Uh, anyways. Let's see here. Gun Delio. No, it, it was like. I don't remember. It was something. It's, it was kind of like an ammo seek, but it was for guns. And it, it was show like the. It was kind of search the internet. I've used it a couple times, but lately everything's been sold out. Anyways, so Jacob out there says for gear that new firearm owners would need to, what ear pro and eye pro would you suggest for budget or easy on the waddle? but well known for being reliable well ear pro is real simple it's easy on the wallet you can find it anywhere for cheap and those are the little foams i mean i thought uh, you was gonna say peanut butter but well he could <laughs> peanut butter or something but i mean I, you know i would say for someone who's just getting started there's no reason to go and buy and you know 100 150 dollar pair of electronic ear pro and all that stuff you can that's up to you but I mean, you know, foam, you don't get those at Walmart. How you can do that? And you can go to Walmart and for probably four dollars or three dollars, you can find or I would say you go to a dollar store and you can find a pair of sunglasses for a dollar, you know. Um, anything, bro. I mean, honestly, there don't let anyone shame you into going and buying the tactical name brands and all that. If you're just starting out and you need something. Um, oh, okay. Grab a gun. Maybe that's it. Grab a gun. Two, two, three DMR. I think that's it. That sounds familiar. Grab a gun, possibly. But anyways, foam ear pro. I mean, go go get find anything. Um, and then go to a dollar store and get a pair of sunglasses. What do you think? I mean, you know, is is would you trust that? Can to, to you, a new one? Can you use that? Yeah. I mean, if you mm -hmm. are. You know, if you're a person that's going to shoot regularly and, you know, this is a hobby, you know, I think you need to graduate and step up just like you would with anything else. Sure. So I think Absolutely. that you're going to get, you know, I think you're going to be looking at quality and then you're going to be looking at other things. It's no secret that I'm a Hunter's HD Gold guy, but people out there are not going to spend $350, the new firearm owner, probably, unless they're, uh, what is it, Ken and Karen or whoever it was, the, uh, right. the cul-de-sac commandos. Uh, yeah. both being lawyers, they would probably spring for $350 eyewear right out of the gate, but most people are not going to do that. Uh, they're just not going to see the long-term value because you, you don't have that base of experience on, you know, what a crappy pair of glasses do for you. Oh, well, this is a step up. Look how much better these are. So forth and so on. Right. And, and it works the same with, with everything. A lot of people get into an entry level Jacob out there, for example, we know he got the double barrel shotgun, right? That's a very common entry level firearm for people. You know, he didn't start out with the, you know, the AR, or the AK or, or something wild like that. Um, so same thing. But I mean, you can get into, I mean, I've always and still to this day, uh, I run Radians Ear Pro. Uh, you know, Radians has been around more so. Uh, they've got a pretty decent name in the in the firearm side of things, but they've been been around for OSHA and safety gear and stuff like that for uh, in, at the, on the industrial level for many many years. Um, and I was a big fan of their Eye and Ear Pro. Still a big fan of their Ear Pro. Um, like I said, their Eye Pro. Yeah, somebody you know on the budget side of things, it's 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 decent stuff. It's gonna it's gonna last you if you take care of it. Uh, be a little better quality than the 99 cent Harbor Freight glasses. But if that's all you can afford, I totally agree, man. Go to Harbor Freight, get a pair of safety glasses for 99 cents and a uh, package of ear plugs for probably less than that and be done with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, like I said, for a beginner, you can go and spend as much as you want. But if, if you're talking a beginner budget friendly, um, if you want, I would suggest me personally, um, especially if you're going to go to a range and they're going to have range safety officers and all that, I would say if you're able to get into electronic ear pro, that you can hear what's going on around you. You can hear cease fire calls. You can, you know, all of that stuff. And I want to, and it's been, I mean, I've got a couple of pair, but it's been a while since I bought them, you know, years, but the impact, um, 
I M P A C T impact. You know, they're, they're like 50 bucks roughly. At least they were, I don't know. They might be a little more now, but I mean, they're about 50 bucks for electronic muffs, um, which are phenomenal. Um, and, and like I said, I mean, you can wear whatever sunglasses you can wear. I mean, the, the glasses that I wear are some, you know, some over $150 Clover wears a couple hundred dollar, you know, uh, I pro, but like I said, if you're just starting out and you don't know, I, I would say, um, you know, you can go onto Amazon and, and do, and what I would suggest also is trying this out because everyone doesn't know until they try, they don't know what they don't know. Right. Um, but you go on Amazon and get like a bundle of eyewear for shooting and it'll come with like three different lenses, have like a dark lenses, yep. yellow lenses, and clear lenses. And some people like different color lenses. They don't know what they don't know, but try all three of them on. I know that you prefer, I, I prefer darker lenses or, or absolute clear lenses if it's if it's gray. I know that you um, you were the Hunter's HD Gold, and they're the, the gold yellow lenses, but you wear them even when you're not shooting. So, yes. um, you know, but you have a specific reason for that, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's, there's, there's health benefits. I've talked to them. I've got reviews. I won't go into it. Everybody out there pretty much knows my stance, but there are health benefits in, in certain things to wearing the Hunter's HD Gold all the time. But you make a great point with the multiple lenses because I do have a set of Radians. Again, chilling for Radians, even though they've never given me the time of day. Um, <laughs> Radians shift is what they're called, and it's a set. And I think there's five different lenses that interchange into these frames. They're very comfortable. Uh, they're fairly high end. They're going to be uh, probably in the neighborhood of 75, 80 bucks for that set uh, on up. Uh, my, maybe even 100, 125 bucks. Um, I can't remember exactly. It's been so many years ago now. Um, but you make a point about the different types of lenses because depending on the different types of an environment you're shooting in and or what you're shooting, Jacob, for example, with the double barrel shotgun, if he's talking about shooting sporting clays, uh, a red lens uh, is really optimal for shotgunning. You see a lot of shotgunners that have the red tint lenses, and there's a reason for that. It makes the clay, the orange clays really glow, uh, really mm -hmm. stand out against a foliage background or something like that. Um, with that being said about the radiance shift that I have, um, I've actually got a couple of sets here. I don't use them anymore. I had them before I got the radiance shift that come with, I think, three or four sets of lenses. And I can't even remember. And they're made by Allen. So look up the, the company that makes, they make a lot of different, you know, fire ministry, outdoor stuff. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. So look up some glasses from Allen. Uh, I want to say you can get those and, the, the lenses don't interchange the same. They're a little bit hokey. They're a little bit cheap compared to the to higher dollar stuff. But I think you can get those with multiple lenses for somewhere around 20 bucks. Yeah. Um, and that would be a good starter set to get you accustomed to, like you're talking about, those different styles. And so mm -hmm. if it's really bright outside or maybe it's dusk and dawn or, or kind of dark or overcast and you've got your different lenses for your different situations and you haven't broken the bank and had to buy several pair of glasses to do that. Right. Um, let's see here. Budget was saying that uh, he used Walker's razors. Walker makes a good one. Walker's I've used um, Venture Gear Tactical. Uh, they were friends of the channel. Uh, I still use their stuff. I, you know, um, I wear and ear pro. So uh, you can find, like I said, you know, you can find a lot of different stuff out there. Uh, and it depends on your budget, but there are uh, a lot of good things out there. And eventually you'll kind of figure out like what kind of lenses you like. And it's like, it's like Clover. Um, you know, Clover has figured out for himself that the yellow lens is not only for shooting, but for life in general, gives him um, some opportunities to feel better physically, mentally, but also help with shooting and all that. So once you figure out whether it's rose or, or clear or yellow or dark or, you know, whatever smoke or whatever color lenses you like and at that lower level, entry level kind of glasses, once you figure out what colors you like, then you can go and buy whatever kind of glasses you want. Yeah. Um, Wayne, and, out there and, is talking, Wayne out there is talking about the, uh, the, HD vision or whatever that uh, yeah, Tonto, Tonto, yeah. Tonto does. They're, those are yeah. pretty good glasses too. I've got some over here. As a matter of fact, um, Jacob, I tell you what, send me an email and I'll send you a starters pack of ear and eye pro. How about that? Can't get any better than free. Can you? So how about that? There you go. Um, I've still got some left over. So I'll, uh, yeah, Tonto's. I, I got some of Tonto's up there. 
Um, I keep them in my range bag. Uh, I, I keep when I go to the range, I'll bring yep. probably two or three extra pairs of Ear Pro, and goodness, probably five or six sets of Eye Pro, yep. just because you never know. You never know, and I don't want anyone to feel like they have to leave because they don't have your eye pro you're here i got you covered matter of fact i was at the range working with a friend of mine a week or so ago and he had forgotten his ear pro and not a problem i pulled out i've got you know you can get little packages of those foam ones for nothing and i've probably got i don't know i mean a handful of those foam ones here bro here's a couple foam ones for you not a problem yep. rod shelly gates out there with the gun cleaners uh, that brings up a good question. When we talk about asking questions, you can text or call them to the Ghost Tactical Hotline presented by the Gun Cleaners at 530-364-4678. So, and, uh, yeah, so Warsaw out there is talking about prescription colored glasses. Let me warn against yes. something here, please. Um, and, and the guys that know that I have Hunter's HD Pro know that I have three sets of those. The ones I wear every day are not safety frames. Um, it is very important if you just wear glasses, if you wear glasses like prescription glasses, that is, those are not safety glasses. Odds are those are not safety lenses or safety right. frames. Those are going to do you absolutely zero good when something comes back and hits those and they shatter or the frame breaks and pokes you in the eye or something crazy like that. Mm -hmm. So let me just forewarn people that is so i've heard people say it before well i've got prescription glasses and that's better than nothing actually it can be worse than nothing in the event that they it's it's a, in the event that something does happen they're going to be likely worse than yeah. if you had nothing on yeah and that's a great point because uh most safety glasses or glasses that are designed for shooting um the lenses themselves are designed if something hits it not to shatter mm -hmm. okay into a million bajillion little pieces they're designed to pop out actually yeah um they, instead yeah. of one piece right. I mean, that's that we're designed to do um yep. so yeah you're absolutely right and that's and something the frames, that really, and uh, the frames are designed in a way that if you've ever seen if you've ever seen an arrow come apart uh, a carbon fiber arrow come apart and has all jagged and splintery. Um, a lot of your frames are going to be that way. If they get, if they get hit, they're going to be all jagged and splintery and safety frames are not going to do that. They're going to have a clean break. Yeah. Uh, Rod's talking about the AKT one uh, are good people and veteran know the great product and it's, and that's um, ear pro. So um, yeah, go check them out as well. I'm all for supporting veteran owned businesses. So it's all good. Um, so if there's not any more other questions out there that we can go over, then, Oh, uh, there was one for Southpaw. I want to bring up Southpaw asked both of us, if you have some extra ammo, you got on the cheap pre COVID, would y'all keep it or sell it? That's easy. Keep it. I, I don't sell ammo. Um, I'm always looking to add ammo. So, uh, the only reason why I would let some of my ammo go is if I'm at the range and a friend of mine is there or something that runs out and I've got an extra box in the vehicle saying, hey, air man, you know, right. take it. I have no problem with that. But looking to sell, actively looking to sell stockpiled ammo, there's a reason why it's stockpiled. Uh, so the, me personally, no, I, I'm not going to sell anyone ammo. Uh, I'm going to keep that. I'm going to hoard the hell out of it. What about you? Uh, well, it's like I said earlier, it depends on, that depends on how much stuff I've got. You know what I mean? Sure. Uh, so that's going to be different for everybody. So you got to make that decision of, you know, do I got any surplus that, you know, that I can let go for, for me now, I really don't have anything that I'm, I would be comfortable getting rid of even at, even at exorbitant prices. I don't have anything that I would feel comfortable right now getting rid of. Sure. Yeah, budget says he uses SSP. I wear SSP is good, absolutely. Um, with the prescription inserts from RX Tactical. Now RX, um, RX does some really good eyewear as well. I think they may a little be a little bit on the. I'm not saying they're expensive, expensive, but they're on the higher end side. But they are uh, prescription styled um, shooting glasses. So yes, they are designed for shooting and uh, safety and all of that stuff. So. I've heard nothing but great things about SSP. I've never actually worn them, 
but I've heard nothing but phenomenal things about SSP. So, uh, well, and Wayne out. and Wayne brings up the Z eighty seven rating, yeah. um, and that's spot on, and that's true. That is the rating. But what you've got to keep in mind is you've got to do your you have to do your diligence and homework. There's a lot of people that tout their stuff as Z eighty seven, and the frames and the lenses both need to be Z eighty seven. If they're not both safety yeah. rated, um, they're not really doing you any good. Yeah. G23 says it depends on the situation. If you would sell ammo, like I said, I'm not going to sell ammo to someone. I'm going to give some ammo to someone if if they need some at the range or someone calls me and say, hey, there's yeah. been some uh, break ins in the neighborhood. I literally yeah. can't find any ammo. Do you? Absolutely. I'm going to give them to them. I'm not yeah, going to sell them. If somebody yeah. called me and they said, hey, you know, so and so gave me your number, even if somebody didn't know. And they uh -huh. said, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to take my license to carry class and I can't find any ammo, blah, 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 blah. Somebody said that, you know, you might have. So I would probably give and or, you know, probably give up a box. Would definitely sell them something at fair market value. Um, once I verified that they are indeed taking a class, because I know most of the instructors. <laughs> uh, that's one of the things that you've got to deal with when you're talking about this situation too is is you say well would you sell you know would you sell some stuff right now well sell it to who right because yeah. what good am i doing if i sell that stuff to somebody that's just hoarding or sell to somebody that's going to jack the price up twice while i sold it for and resell it to somebody else and that just perpetuates the cycle that we've got going on right now if people would get out of that and say okay either say okay i'm set i don't I don't need anything. And so I'm not going to buy any stuff right now because I'm good. Uh, and, you know, they don't inflate prices on what they've already got. And then you've got people that would uh, that just say, look, I missed the boat. Right. And quit paying jacked up prices. Then mm -hmm. you would see it come back around, I think, a lot quicker. Uh, simplified JMA. What's going on? Uh, Warsaw was talking about something, spending money for um, MVGs. I, you know, I, 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 I'm not a huge fan of, of nods. I, I, I really, I'm not a big fan of it for those that have never worn it. And I assume that Warsaw's never worn night vision goggles, uh, might be mistaken, but I would assume that he hasn't. Um, if you've never worn night vision goggles, they're not the most fun things to, to wear. Um, and people think that, that you have to have ambient moonlight for those things to run well. I would say if you're going to spend money and you can go find a thermal, that would be something that would probably be a little more beneficial than MVGs because MVGs really don't give you an advantage. Um, yes, you can see in, in pitch black um, kind of scenarios where you would have an advantage, but how many night ops are you planning on doing there, Warsaw? I mean, honestly, um, I, I don't know of any civilians that would need night vision just to have unless they just want night vision yeah um, and i would you know, spend and i would spend thirty five hundred dollars on night vision i mean if you it get wasn't, night vision for if you it know, wasn't thermal i would and you could get thermal for thirty five hundred bucks so oh, that's what i'm saying if, if, if that's what i'm saying for 30 for that kind of price i'd go with thermal um so um that's what it is uh andrew says when ghost was in night vision was a candle on top of the helmet um <laughs> I, I would say that when I was in the MVGs that we had um, are obviously primitive to what they have now, but the, the, the technology, you know, is still the same. Night vision is night vision. I would say go thermal if you can. The, the, the There's only two real advantages that um, NVGs will give you. One is if, the other person doesn't have them and you're in a dark place and yes, you will be able to um, maybe see a little better than they would. And two, if you're running IR uh, is your team, if your team's running IR, then you can utilize your IR laser for targeting procedures and your night vision will pick that up. Uh -huh. But that's more of communication within a team. That's not necessarily giving you a, a tactical advantage with the, the, the well, MVGs got themselves. You well, know. you've got in a in you've got a you've got a drawback to to infrared um, as well because if let's say let's say I'm going against you right and and I have my 
thermal and you have your infrared. Uh, and we know that and we know this, right? Um, mm -hmm. All I got to do is carry me, carry a flashlight with me. And when I see you flip that high beam on right at you and you're blind at that point. That's you're the thing is I don't like running. Um, I, I, everyone knows I don't like running weapon lights. Now, on a home defense or something like that, battle gun, yeah, there's a reason. I don't use that light because I need to see. I actually want it to be dark. Once your eyes get used and they get regulated to darkness, if, if, if you've never, like you said, if you've never had eyes get ready and get used to the darkness and it's someone flash any, any kind of light, much less a, a 2,000 lumen light in your eyes from 21 feet, well, but if and it, what's even fun. worse is if you're well, looking the through, light is, yeah, yeah, the light, the light's actually better than MVGs because you can use the light as a weapon, you know. Yeah, yeah, because it's going to be even that much brighter through those. Yeah, you know? exactly. And then when you take them off, you're screwed because your eyes are used to seeing that bright, and if you take them off and it's dark, you've got absolutely no night night vision. And that works the same even if you're running thermal. Um, you know, you're looking through that thermal and you're looking at a screen, um, and you know, that screen's bright. And when you transition off of that, it's, it's not good. Um, Jacob, man, I, I love Jacob because he always asks great questions. Um, and I love the fact that he's not afraid to ask the questions. He doesn't have the ego to act like he, 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 he wants to learn. And he's, a, he's, he, I love it. Um, before we start that though, our buddy Ron out there, uh, he said he couldn't make it tonight. He says he does have lights and everything for the element of surprise. Exactly. And I guarantee Ron's the same way I am. He's not utilizing the lights to see. He's he's letting the darkness be our friend. Yep. But he is utilizing those lights as weapons. You can All it takes, you flash that light, and they do that. That gives you that second or two, one to identify. But then... Boom, you know, they're down before they even even think about pulling a trigger. So, yeah, lights are good um, and they can be used as a weapon for sure. Uh, but Jacob was asking, um, let's go weapons light versus strobe light versus Walmart light. Now I'm talking I'm assuming he means like handheld. So, you know, a lot of lights these days, I, I, I would I'm not going to lie. I have some of the Walmart lights that are a dollar and they're spread out throughout the house. They're just for quick access, just to have something if I need it. Um, but stream lights, I mean, I, you know, let's throw O light. I mean, there are a lot of really good handheld lights. And these days, a lot of them are going to have the light and strobe fact, uh, function on the same light. Like if you, if you push the button, yeah. uh, the light comes off. If you push it twice, it's a strobe. Um, both of them are good. Um, what are you asking me that if you, if it only has one, would you get a light or a strobe? I'm honestly, I would probably tend to lean towards a strobe, honestly. Um, because the strobe, the strobe could do some weird things to someone's mind in that split second. What do you say? Well, you're talking about only having the strobe. Well, I'm saying is, is if I had, if, if, my 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 suggestion was go find a light that has both of them. Yeah, but if yeah. you're at some place and you can only afford a light that has one or the other, would you recommend a light or a strobe? A light, a light, because you can most lights you can turn them on, especially if they've got the the thumb switch on the end. Uh, most of them have a momentary function, so you mm. can actually strobe them manually. Mm. Uh, so rather than have one that did nothing but strobe, I would prefer to have one that I could. Turn, you could even turn a light on and off and make it strobe, even if it wasn't a momentary switch. You could yeah. you know, hit it with your thumb a few times, turn it on and off, and make it strobe. So yeah, well, I, like I said, I think I think most lights these days are going to have both functions these days. I mean, that's just you know, yeah. Uh, and Warsaw was talking about LEDs out there, and yeah, yeah. Uh, nowadays just about everything's LED. Anyway. Everything's LED now. If, if you're not running LED, even the cheap Walmart lights are LED. Right. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. and JMA has a, a, a great, uh, thing about MVGs, you know, and he was in Fallujah and he had them and the searchlight. If you have night vision on and you get hit by a light, whether it's car lights, a searchlight, any kind of bright light, that's not fun. <laughs> Just saying it's not fun at all. Um, so yeah, we're, we're talking uh, a little kind of stuff that, um, is part of it because this kind of goes into the tactical training is 
what kind of gear and all that. I didn't think we would go down this road, but for sure it is definitely part of it. Um, you know, Patriots has given him some strobes. Um, and yeah, and like I said, most lights these days are going to have both functions of light and strobe. Um, but, you know, you can find different ones. Streamlight's got some good stuff. Um, this one is just, uh, I don't even know what brand this is. Um, it's just, a, it's a cheap, it's not, it's not a weapons light. It's, it's, it's kind of too big for a pocket, but I use it here. But yeah, it's, that's LED. And there's the strobe. So, I mean, like I said, it'll, this is, this is a cheap, probably $20 flashlight, but it's got both of them, you know, LED and the strobe. So, I mean, like I said, you can find, you can find all sorts of stuff out there. Uh, Jacob, you're, you're, I love it, man. This might be the Jacob show. We need to have you come on the show sometime. Um, what about for someone who is naturally sweaty hands, making holding a firearm or flashlight hard to do when adrenaline is rushing? Um, I okay. So this is interesting because this is me personally, and I, I'm not going to speak for anyone else. I don't typically like running gloves. Okay. Um, oh hell, where are my gloves? I just had them. Um, well, hell, I've got a bunch of different gloves, but. Um, I, I typically don't like running gloves. I will say this, that um, in certain situations, gloves are going to help you out uh, with sweat and all of that. I would say powder. You could, you know, uh, a lot of uh, powders good for sweaty hands. Um, what I like to do is if, I'm, if I know that I'm going to be running gloves, you know, gloves that um, I had back in the day, I'd cut, I'd cut the trigger finger about that knuckle off so that um, at least my trigger finger is still gonna have skin to trigger contact where i can feel everything that's, that's one of the biggest reasons why i don't like gloves is um not having the feel of the trigger finger but mm -hmm. uh, that's just me if i'm gonna wear gloves i will typically on a trigger finger i will cut the glove at that knuckle so where at least that is going to um, be skin to, to trigger contact. I've got um, a pair of I've got a pair of work gloves, and mm -hmm. I think they're like Wells or Mont, but they're like a like a leather, almost like a lambskin or something type stuff. But then the fingertips uh, are neoprene, maybe you know. I want to say spandex, but I don't think it is. I think it's more like a neoprene uh, in the fingertips on it. Um, which are pretty cool because that's a lot thinner material and everything. Um, but I really, I really like those things. I mean, I, they're work gloves, but you know, I've went out when it's cold or something like that, throw those dudes on and you know, they help tremendously and they, they really don't hinder that feel of the, of the trigger. I'm going to give you a little secret. Um, now this is old school that I did back in the day that we did um, a lot because someone mentioned grip tape. I, I'm all for the grip tape that get good stippling. You can get uh, what they call it skateboarders tape or whatever. They've all got all sorts of different stuff that you can utilize. But um, I'll make you a little secret that we use, and I still use it to this day uh, for very, very cheap. And you can get a lot of them, a lot of use out of one. For five or six dollars, you can go to Walmart and get a bicycle tire, the rubber tire. And the great thing about that is, is whether you're using a handgun or an AR or anything that's got a, a pistol grip, basically, um, you can utilize it and you just measure the length that you want and you cut the, the tire, flip it inside out, slide it on whatever gun that you're going to use. And you have a very cheap homemade hoe grip. Um, and the great thing about that is those tires if you flip them inside out, they don't have anything on the outside treated with any chemicals. It's just pure rubber in there. And you're going to find that um, your hands won't slip on that very often. I still to this day will use it. Um, and you can get one big tire for five bucks and you can probably get at least 15 to 20 gun grips out of that if you do it the right way. So um I'm a big fan. I would I would rather use a hoe grip or a, a rubber style grip 
much more than I would grip tape. That's just me personally. I'm not a huge fan of uh, of grip tape, but um, but I, I definitely love um, inner tubes, whatever you want to call. It. I mean, that's what they're called. They're inner tubes, but they're the the inner tire tubes. I mean, they're they're not tires, but the the tubes that go in. Yeah, the inner tubes is what they are. Um, is what he's talking about. But you can get those for nothing at Walmart, and you can cut as many as you want, and they work great. Um, so anyone that tells you to go and spend a lot of money on these different grips and go down to Walmart for five bucks and you can get 10, at least 10 um, grips out of that very easily. Um, yeah, and Patriots, like with the inner tube, you don't risk the sticky glue uh, getting all over it. Like I said, it, it's one of those things. Now, Warsaw Sand, ever use paracord wrap pistol grip? No, I, I love paracord. But I would never think of a paracord pistol grip. Um, too, much, too much shift in my mind with the different threads and all in it. Yeah, there, it's not actually. I mean, you know, it, it, I don't know. If you're gonna glue it or something onto that grip, then you just why would you use paracord? Because paracord is used for a lot of other things. Um, to me, it'd just be too bulky. Now, if you've yeah. got a big ass hand, maybe, but I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Um, that's just me. Uh, Patriot says the inner tubes work on covering Zippos also. There you go. I I, I, I wouldn't have thought about that. Uh, Wayne Barnhart says tennis racket grip tape uh, works well. I would imagine it would or like a baseball bat tape. I've never used any of that stuff on any um, weapon systems. But, um, yeah, I guess, I guess that tennis racket stuff would probably work. What do you think about that? Oh, yeah, any of the sports tape would work well. I, I never thought about that. Uh, Jacob says, is a paracord slick? I mean, some of it is. I mean, it depends on the paracord. Um, you can you can find some slick paracord. You can find some paracord. It's got some texture to it. Whatever they, you know, every paracord is made differently. So um, it is what it is. Anyways, all right. So um, thanks to uh, Jacob for all the great questions. Now, keep them coming, bud. Keep them coming. But we're going to kind of jump in. Hell, it's already been 47 minutes. We haven't even started the topic yet. So <laughs> Jesus. Holy shit. Uh, so we're going to talk about, like I said, uh, I got a comment a, a couple, three weeks ago asking basically, uh, I was talking about training on another show from a year or something like that. It was a while ago. Asking, do I really think that civilians need military slash tactical training? And like I said, I mean, my, my initial is absolutely, but I understand the question because um, most people, when they hear tactical training or whatever, um, I, I think that there's a pretty big misconception of what that means. And I think that a lot of people think that people getting kitted up, going to be weekend warriors and trying to live out their, their, uh, you know, those spec op john wick fantasies through training and there are people there are a lot of people like that matter of fact i would say that um i would say i'm not gonna say the vast majority but i would say the majority of people that go to that kind of training that's exactly what they're there for is to uh live out their fantasies of of being some some dude you know but um okay um but so I thought that's an interesting conversation because there's a lot of things that people don't realize what is tactical training. And you use the word tactical. Once again, people think the word tactical means it up and Rambo and, and all of these guys, you know, flying in helicopters and all of that stuff. And tactical has nothing. To, the word tactical means tactics. And if, if, if you're talking about getting, training that's going to help you with different tactics then if you start thinking about it in that way instead of what most people think of tactical means of tactical um then obviously my answer is still the same yes um now i know clover may have a different opinion so before we start i want to say you know in general and before we dive into the specifics but in general clover do you think that tactical slash military style training has a place in the civilian world? Okay. So you, you, it depends on how you ask that question. It does. So the way you ask that question. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would be remiss to, to say that it, it doesn't. I mean, there uh, are certain benefits one could get. 
-hmm. Is it necessary would be a question that I would tell you no. Okay, so let me ask you this. Just a simple class that shows how to combat pistol malfunctions. Do you would you consider that as a tactical training class? Nope, nope. I think that pretty much falls into the basic firearms handling. Okay. I don't, I don't view that as tactical. You okay. know, tactical. What I view as tactical. That's what we're talking about. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. I was waiting for this. Here's what, we go. Here we go. What I view as tact. When you say tactical, I'm one of the people that you yeah. alluded to. Flip it across the hood, engaging 17 targets with fully automatic weapons or some kind of crap. You know, that's that's what I envision when somebody says tactical, right? It's because and it's because that has you know how words bring on meaning through time, right? That's just what it's become to mean. I mean, you say tactical, people think John Wick or you know some type. Right military movie or something right uh well it's a it's a you know we're moving as a team we're clearing a building we're you know that kind of stuff right mm -hmm. um where a lot of the a lot of the fundamentals get tied into tact tactical i mean you can't get to that level you can't do tactical stuff without having fundamentals right, right. so the mm -hmm. fact that fundamentals are taught in a tactical class doesn't mean that those are tactics that are tactical that means there are fundamentals that have to be taught before you get to that certain level makes sense so one can exist without the other completely no doubt uh before we go on uh g23 says i want to take training from shooting from a vehicle i don't know where you are bro but in about a month here at my local range um, we're bringing some guys in to work train with the uh, local sheriff's department i'm training i want to train with them um, but it's going to be um, it's going to be a, a defensive vehicle uh, pistol and rifle class. Um, it's three hundred bucks. If you're interested, let me know. If you can make it to Arkansas, come on down. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a, a, a vehicle training class, pistol and rifle. So I think you're going to need five hundred uh, pistol rounds and two hundred rifle rounds is what they're calling for. So uh, let me know. Anyways. So that's exactly what I was talking about, Clove, is the idea of when most people hear the word tactical, they go not only where you go, but the vast majority of people go to there. Mm -hmm. But tactics is, is, is that exactly what it is? It's tactics is, in my eyes, the word tactical can be meaning 10 different things. And in my eyes, one of them is handling a firearm. Um, if you know the basic, and, and yes, clearing a malfunction is basic, but is it that not tactical? Because in a sense, if you're in a firefight and something goes wrong, mm -hmm. you have a tactical advantage over the person that you are fighting against. If you know how to clear a jam or have a misfeed or whatever, and they don't. So, like I said, you know, there's different ways, but I would agree that even, even yeah. me, I would suggest that when you hear the word tactical, it does mean CQB. It does mean uh, shooting from a vehicle. It, it does mean a lot of um, combative handgun and rifle skills, uh, room clearing, moving as a team. Um, and, and that stuff is is one of those where I think that it gets a bad rap because people oh. do talk about... Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. no, finish your thought people talk about well we don't need that stuff we don't need that stuff and, and i'll say this if you've never taken a, a combative handgun or rifle course then you don't really know what your firearms can really do um the person that goes takes a basic handgun class they're great and you, like like clover says those are prerequisites everyone should take those but most people don't have a clue what their actual firearms can do. Most people are going to buy an AR and they don't really know what their ARs can do. And wouldn't it be nice to know what your rifle can or can't do in a shit hits the fan scenario? Go ahead. Well, first of all, yeah. I don't think you need that to be able to know what your firearms can and can't do. You don't have to go take Some a class. Do. 
to know mm -hmm. some people do. Here's where That's we get it. Here's where we get into the nuance and the minutia and where I start getting my panties in a bunch. Okay. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> At least you finally admitted that. Um, I shiver. Were, I shiver. Panties. I shiver whenever people say, well, yeah, I think people need to, I think people need to have training, you know, if they own a firearm and I shiver. Because the second you say that, you imply that for however many years now, including the wild, wild west and the roaring 20s and everything else and all the hunting that's went on, you know, you know, firearm deaths as a part of negligence, right? Being unsafe or collateral damage or something is just flat out non-existent. And so compared to people meaning to do harm, right? Um, and so you're changing a dynamic for years that people have grew up on the farm, have learned safety and how to use stuff, taken that many have taken that and went into the military and maybe not current times, but, you know, back, you know, with the greatest generation and stuff have taken that into the military and become some of the greatest marksmen in the, that the world had ever seen in those scenarios from simply the skills they learned on the farm. So you're taking this this dynamic of history and, and our culture that it, we've been around it. We we understand it. Okay, we're, we're going to go. We're going to figure this out. We're going to be safe. We're going to learn how to manipulate it. We're going to do these things. And you're taking it and shifting it into, well, the people need training. Well, do they need do they need familiarization with it? Do they need to know how to manipulate? Do they need to know how they become more proficient or do they need to go take a class where somebody tells them that or somebody shows them that okay well maybe that's something that they should make the decision and do on their own but for somebody to say that all firearms owners need a certain amount of of training because most people's minds when you say training what does it go to it goes to what you're talking about. It goes to the John Wick military style. That's where the mind that's where the minds go. We we started this off talking about that, right? That's where everybody's mind goes when you say training. So when you when we we as gun owners we reinforce that narrative. Well, you know, I really I, I really do think everybody needs training. Well then you're setting it up for the powers that be to go, okay, well, nobody can have a gun until they go take this thousand dollar course. And guess what? You got to keep up with it because, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it. So now you got to go take this thousand dollar course every year to keep your license on a firearm or whatever it is. And I don't ever want it to get to that point. I don't want anybody that's out there to become overwhelmed like Mr. Jacob out there, for example, to become, and he asks questions and he's awesome that he's, that he's reaching out and trying to learn. But I don't want to be anybody out there that has never touched a firearm but has interest in them to think that it's some taboo thing that you've got to have John Wick level training in order. To, it's a simple piece of machinery. You cock the hammer, you pull the trigger, it goes bang if it's loaded. Make sure it's pointed at what you want it to, you know, what you want the bullet to hit. It's it's a really simple idea. And so once you now that being said, there's tons of models. There's there's when you talk about, OK, now I'm going to add the element of home defense. Now I'm going to add the element of hunting. Now there's all kinds of nuance and minutia when it comes to those individual tasks with a firearm. And there comes things that you're going to have to learn with each of those. But does that require the, the quote unquote tactical classes that you're talking about? No, not at all. Yep. G23 is asking, what's the guy's name? Uh, you know, about Tonto. Tonto's got a defensive uh, vehicle shooting class in the Shreveport in September as well. I don't think I'm going to be able to make that one because they've got some stupid ass quarantine rules with, with Shreveport, with Louisiana. So, um, but we, we brought, we're bringing someone in here to do something as well. But uh, Tonto, Peronto. Uh, go check out um, Battle Line Tactical, and he'll have his classes on there. Um, let's see here. Stephen Elder says he was a doorbell in Mogadishu. Uh, so when were you in the shoe? Because uh, I'd be interested because um, I was there a while ago. But I'd be interested to see when you were there and who were you with because we might have shared some same sand. But uh, let's see here. Uh, no, and, and I and I agree. I think the word need. I, I don't think that the word tactical and I don't think the word training is the problem. I think the word need. Right. Now, do I think that um, 
hold on, I got text. Sorry. Well, it's it's abusive. You might get your text. It's it's abusive <laughs> language in a way, right? Mm -hmm. Because here it is. I mean, I've had firearms since I was old enough to walk, and you've got the audacity to tell me I need this training when you've been into firearms for like a month. You know, you got your first firearm a month ago, and you've taken six tactical classes, and you're going to tell me that I need training? I think you better check yourself before you wreck yourself, brother. Oh, damn. He, he went straight up uh, ice cube on you. Uh, no, and, and I would I would, I would would agree. Um, Buck, if you're still up there, I sent you a text. It was meant for somebody else. Now, that uh, that said, I, I get what Budget is saying. That you know, I, There's people. I know people in my community that I shiver. I know that they carry every day, and I shiver. No at the thought. So what do I do? I try to be that beacon. I try to be that example of what a firearms owner should be. That way, maybe while I'm looking at them and going, Oh my God, you know, head slap this idiot, right? Maybe they're looking at me and going, Hey, I need to buck up. I need to be more like that guy. Yeah. Holy hell. So elder was on the USS Bella wood 31st view, 93, 94. So, I was with 31st. I was actually with 3rd Cab. That we were attached to the 31st, and we were in the shoe in um, early '95. We were probably one of the last people that were there before uh, they basically kicked us out. Ironically, so we caught a ride on the Bella Wood, and it's a flat bottom LHA. And um, if anyone knows anything about flat bottom boats, they're not fun. Um, these will say that was not my, uh, fondest memory of, of anything. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, ironic. Yeah. So I was about a year or so behind you, but yeah, we were in, uh, the shoe there for a while and caught a ride back, uh, over to Korea on the Bella Woods. So anyways, yeah. Uh, small world. Awesome. 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 So, um, they're talking about Mike Glover. Yeah, I mean, Mike, some great stuff over at Fieldcraft. Great, great stuff. Uh, Ron Holmes does great. I mean, you know, Todd Fox, uh, great stuff. Tonto, great stuff. So, um, yeah, anyways, uh, Keith's out there shooting. Uh, what's up, Joe? Joe's out there. Um, anyway, so, yeah, the whole thing about the tactical training is – I think that the whole point is people, like you said, there, the word tactical could be used in 27 different ways. And I love what you're saying. And I love that there are certain uses uh, for training. And I think that there are certain people that, that need training. Uh, and I use that word need very, very lightly. But to say that everyone needs training, I, I think you're right. That's a scary proposition. And, and I think that that's where some bad doors could be open. But let's kind of get into, let's get this off here. Uh, let's kind of let's get off into when we talk about tactical training, the actual tactical training side, um, and and where I think that people misunderstand where it is. Like I said, a lot of people are just want to get kitted up for the weekend. And they want to go live out their their destinies and their their dreams of of being some kind of a badass or something, and that's not what it's about. For me, what it's about is teamwork, discipline, and communication. If you're going to go into, let's say, a, uh, a class and it's going to be CQB with some breaching, room clearing, all that kind of stuff, what people need to understand is if you're going to do that as an individual, then you there are ways and techniques that you could utilize in your home. And let's take that same single man room clearing class, okay, and we're going to learn how to clear a room individually which is not fun it's pain painfully long to do if you do it the right way because you have to be very very careful if you're clearing a house or a room by yourself um, but you take those those techniques okay and you apply it to well i'm not gonna be going into you know afghanistan i don't need to clear a village and all that no but what if you're in your bedroom and someone breaks into your home wouldn't it be nice to know how to clear a room to get to your kids or your parents or whoever's in there um, the right way to give yourself an advantage? I'm not saying that everyone has to learn it, but what I'm saying is is where is I, I know that you're, is, you're, you're going nuts right now, and I'm going to let you talk here in a second. But, you know, the reason why I say that is in this specific instance, 
Taking a single man room clearing class can help you in everyday life if you have someone break into your home because the techniques will teach you how to properly maneuver by yourself in a closed space with a threat. Okay. So what I'm talking about is do you have to know that? No. Does it help you? Yes. But that's part of the tactical is it's it's movement, it's techniques. So I know that you're going nuts, so go for it. Well, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. Uh, you're, but you're, you're talking about a dynamic. You go from team and communication into you're clearing a room by yourself. Okay. So I, I, I love thing. you. I love you, but you contradicted yourself while you were well, talking. We're getting ready to get into that. We're getting ready to get into the so, team. Aspect. And and most people are you know gonna be responsible for pretty much themselves. They're gonna be a sole defender in whatever situation it is, it may be you and your family, but odds are your kids aren't strapped. Your wife could be. Um, but you know, whether you're at a restaurant, you're in the mall, you're in your house, when you take the team and the communication thing, and then you try to transpose that into a single man, that's two different things to start with. Um, so if you want to dissect that, you can, I do have a point that I agree with you on, and we can get on, get to that here in a minute. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, go ahead. Um, because I don't want to sound cantankerous like I disagree with everything. One thing that I think comes from a more tactical run and gun movement style training, um, and especially with other people, potentially working with teams like you're talking about, uh, force on force, for example, th mm -hmm. things of that nature is stress factor. Cause I do believe that the people like myself that go, Hey, you know, I've, got a range i've got access to a range i can practice i can be proficient i can know what to do i can run through scenarios i can do all this i don't have to go take these training courses right mm -hmm. but how many people have access to a range and can do that but they go out and stand static in front of a static target mm -hmm. they don't even shoot engage multiple steel targets or do anything like that let alone any type of movement right they mm -hmm. only do it when the temperature is optimal they only do it when the skies are clear, they only do it in the daytime. They only, they only, they only, right? They go out and punch holes in paper or ring steel. Let's be honest. And they may, rest, say, right? they may say that's practice or training. Well, it's practice, I guess, but that's not practice. training, right? No. If it ain't raining, we ain't training. There's a reason there's that saying, right? Mm -hmm. right. And so I would agree that most people don't put themselves into stressful situations like that. Um, and so those people that maybe aren't capable of doing that, maybe going to those trainings is a good way for them to get, get interject themselves into the environment. You feel what I'm saying? No, absolutely. And I think you're right. I think most people think that practicing is training and it's not practicing is no. practicing. And you got to no. have that. Let's not absolutely. discount. Let's not discount the ability to, you know, shots inside the same hole at 15 yards. I mean, no, no. There, there's, you know, that muscle memory, that muscle retention, everything that, you know, there, that's going to come into play when, you know, that the scenario plays out and you've got to get those shots on target. You know, your side alignment, your muscle memory, your grip, all of that is important. It's vital. It's one of those fundamentals that we're talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, it's something as simple as, uh, matter of fact, you know, when I'm working with someone, I'll have them do 25 jumping jacks or 20 push ups, mm -hmm. then stand up, draw, see what you do that with an accelerated heart rate with a drill and pump in, uh, go, go run a lap around something or run in place for 30 seconds. You increase that heart rate. If your only thing that you have is shooting from a rest at seven yards with a 22 on paper, sitting down. I don't want you anywhere around in a gunfight. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's just me. Um, right. That's just me. All right, so now we're moving on to the part of the technique. And, and I think, once again, a single-man room clearing, I brought that up because that is still tactical training. It is clearing a room, but there's you know multiple person and there's a single man. But the single man is as good to have. But when you're talking about team movements, tactical training, whether it's, it's breaching, whether it's room clearing, whether it's whatever it is, uh, 
any kind of CQB or CQC, whatever they were calling it these days, uh, training that is done with a team, it's not just the tactics. It's not just the techniques. Yes, there are certain things that if you have a four-man fire team and you're running the one, you have certain responsibilities, the two, the three, the four, have certain responsibilities in those scenarios. And yes, you've got to know those techniques. You've got to form a will cohesion of, of a solid team movement that you have to move as a team. One person messes up, that team dynamic is wrong. But a lot of it comes down to communication because you have to, the tactical training is if, if you've been trained in a four person fire team room clearing CQB scenario, you should know what all four people's responsibilities are. So if you're ever in a situation and, and, and you're a red dawn scenario and you have four, three other guys with you and you, and you need to go get some supplies somewhere, you can be able to, to talk a little bit about, hey, I need for you to do this, I need for you to do this, and I need for you to do this. Now you're talking about fields of fire. You're talking about breaching. You're talking about entering a room and knowing where you know your focus is supposed to be instead of just running in guns a blazing. That's part of the tactical, but it's also communication. And a lot of it is silent communication. Um, you know, I can probably get JMA, Patriot, and find me another Marine out there that's, that's done – you know, room clearing, and we've never worked together. But I guarantee you the four of us could get in a line, worry about breaching a door, enter a room, and clear that room in about three, four seconds from start to finish with never even meeting each other. Because we know what we're supposed to do. We already know the communication. That, you know, there, there are certain things you do before entering a room and all of that, that that's silent communication. So that's part of the tactical training also is learning how to work with others, to move with others in a group and to communicate without words, verbal communication in a scenario of shit hit the fan or home invasion. Now let's talk about you. You made a thing about this is what if someone's in your house and your wife doesn't know anything about this? Well, guess what? If you go take a, a class that shows you how to do two or three man room clearing. You can then go home and say, all right, honey, I know that you don't know what you talk about, but if something happens and we need to leave this room, someone, someone's in our house and we need to leave this room, here's going to be your responsibility. And once again, the communication and the techniques are could possibly allow you to succeed and live through that scenario versus someone who has never had that training. Does that make sense? You probably don't agree with that, but that's okay. I don't believe you got to go get trained and pay for training to get that, but yeah. Okay, so if if you were someone that has never served in any law enforcement, military, and all that, and you're wanting to know how to clear a room, single man or two man or three man, mm -hmm. how would you do that? Are you talking about where are we putting this in the context of somebody that has just now gotten into the firearm game? And are we putting this in the context of somebody that's never played a first person shooter video game in their entire freaking life? Because I'll you almost, you almost, I'm gonna, yourself. I'm going to give you the rope and let you take this wherever you want to. Cause I, cause I think you almost have to be talking about somebody that's, that's just so totally green at stuff that they're not able to pick up a book or, or you'll know, watch a video or something. And, and figure that out. Okay. So let's just say that it doesn't have to be someone who's green, just someone that has never had experience with team movements or communications. Mm -hmm. You don't think that if, if they're wanting to learn that they don't need to go get training. How else would they learn that? Oh, wait, no. See language matters. If you okay. want to learn something, go do it. Okay. I don't have a problem with I'm, that. I'm not, I'm not saying not that anyone needs to know these. I'm, I'm saying not. if you want to know these skills, then I don't think you have to. I don't think I think that's an avenue you can go to learn that. But I don't think that's the only way to get the information. OK, no. how well would you get it? Well, like I said, <laughs> I mean, there's there's tons of resources out there from, you know, books to videos to just talking with somebody who's done it before.
You just got through yourself saying, well, you can go take a two man course and you can come home and you can tell your wife. Well, why the hell can't I just ask you how to do it ghost? So let's that I said, I'm going to give you the rope. Here is the biggest problem with tactical training. Everyone assumes that it's a paid for class. Training is not, you do not have to pay for training. And that's why I said, I'm going to give you the rope because I'm not saying you, but a lot of people assume when you hear training, it is a class that you've got to go somewhere and pay someone to teach you. That's not true. So you're, you're taking what you're saying. Here's mm -hmm. what I hear you saying. And I'm going to interject religion into this for just a sure. minute. Holy Be hell. Because, okay, cool. because no, I mean, we're not going to go off the deep end with it, but All right. I don't believe you have to go to a church to have church. So what you're saying is you don't have to go to a training to have training. No, I don't believe so. You just use, I'll, I'll take the example is if you personally were wanting to know how to do a one man or a two man room clearing, mm -hmm. you said, I just call you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I'd come down to your house and your range and we would do it for two days. Is that training? Yeah, that would be training. Yeah, sure. It'd be, it would be no different than me. It would be, it would be no different than if I read a book or watched a video and then went out on the range and done it. Exactly. Is it a class? Nope. Did you pay for it? Nope. It's just two buddies out there that someone has experience and knowledge that they're willing to share. Mm -hmm. That's training. And, and once again, that's why I said I want to I want to give you the rope because I knew you were going with that. Yeah. And I think that that's one of the biggest misconceptions. Once again, it training is. does not necessarily mean you have to go to a thousand dollar class. Well, it, but it, I don't, it gets I don't believe it means that you can open up a book and look at pictures and figure it out. I so think you can I do that. On some, things, on some things you can. Some I things you there's can. There's plenty, and there's plenty of people that can do that too. That's there's true. people out there that flabbergasted me for 20 years in business fixing computers that couldn't that come and paid me to fix something that I'm thinking, seriously, these people couldn't figure out how to do this themselves, and they're going to pay me to do this. It, it's the same thing. I mean, there's people out there that they have to go somewhere, they have to pay, they have to take a training for whatever reason. Their brain just doesn't work that way. I totally get that. I totally get that. Yeah. But again, we get back into a couple things. First of all, we get back into saying need, need, need. Everybody needs this. We got to be careful with that. And then yeah. the second thing is that the perception of whenever you say training, people go immediately to, you know, it's, well, we're going to SWAT school, you know. Yeah, um, how I don't, I can't count. I literally can't count the times when you're at the range for a class or whatever, and some dude is all tacked out. He's I mean, we're talking full kit and he's, it's like, and he's usually the dude that's the most dangerous. It could oh, hit the yeah. broad side of the barn at 10 yards. No doubt. No doubt. And, 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 and you walk up to a class and you walk up and, and you see that guy, you're like, okay, that's him. Every class has one. And it's usually that guy, you know, right. it's usually that guy. Yeah. Um, JMA says he runs a free CQB class um, for groups there in Colorado all the time. That's awesome. Um, you know, it, it's one of those things where, and once again, we're talking about CQB has so many different implementations that people don't realize. Once again, we're talking the techniques. Absolutely. The techniques are wonderful to have. You can implement those into real world of not only someone invading your home, but what if you're at Walmart, okay, and someone's or a gas station or something like that, and someone holds it up or there's something, an active shooter somewhere, part of CQB is understanding angles. It's understanding um, different techniques to put yourself in a position to not only get that person, but get safely through that room to the next room or to escape or whatever. So this techniques can be used in a lot of different scenarios, understanding movements, understanding how to position yourself to uh, be behind cover um, or at least concealment, but hopefully behind cover and still be able to, you know, take care of any threat. So there's a lot of movements, the communication side, 
You know, what if you're in a gas station and you are you don't know anyone there, but someone holds up, but you've got two or three guys are like, hey, what do we do? Okay, I need for you to do this. I need for you to do this. I need for you to do this. Boom, we're going to move the team because that one guy who's holding up the, the cash register isn't going to be able to handle a mad rush from a well-organized, well-communicated four-man team. It ain't going to happen. That dude, unless he's got some serious training, some serious training is not going to be able to handle that. So once again, the techniques can move on into normal everyday life. Go ahead. Well, you know, there's there's something to be said, a couple of things that you bring up there. Uh, you know, first of all, it's communication and the nonverbal communication. And one thing that I think about is posturing. Um, you know, there is, you know, if you're in a situation, right, where you're at a restaurant, it's a shopping mall, it's whatever it might be, right? Well, there happens to be somebody there that is decided they're going to shoot up the place or whatever, right? Um, and you engage. There's something to be said about engaging in a certain way that still, still shows defensive posturing. Because you don't want to be mistaken as the guy shooting up the place. And mm -hmm. if you're in a situation, not only could, is that an issue if law enforcement was to be on the scene and you're not aware or whatever, but also other people that are licensed to carry, you know, and it's the same way. It's that I would hope that those people care and that decide, okay, you know, I'm engaging that I would be able to tell, okay, here's the guy that's the problem. These two are my allies, right? So there's something to be said about the way you draw, you know, finding the concealment to cover like you're talking about. Odds are the crazed gunman is not going to be doing that. He's going to be waving things around. You look at you look at video all the time of robberies, right? And yeah. you've got you've got no definitive eye contact. Everybody's doing this you've with got, his gun. You've got, no fo you've got no focus by the assailant. Yeah. Usually they're looking all over the place. They're waving all around. They're not You're cool. Going nuts. They're yeah. not cool, calm, calculated, and you can and you can you know, you look at them and you can tell they're not assessing nothing, right? So there's something to be said about exaggerating those characteristics if you ever have to get into a uh, defensive situation like that. I call it defensive posturing. I don't know the the technical term of it, but you, right. you want to be perceived as a defender, right? Not an attacker. Right. No, you're right. And I think, like I said, you know, knowing those, and someone made a point, hold on here, uh, and Stephen is right, and this is something that, um, you know, I will say that having some paid documentary training will go a long way if you're ever in court. Yes, I mean, you know, uh, it, it, will it will help. help. Is it necessary? So is it necessary? No. I could say well, it going the opposite direction in civil in, court. In civil court, it could well, say well, he had he had all this he had all this training. Yeah. So if were, he had all this training. Why police. did he have to kill the guy if he had all this? Yeah. Training, right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Because um, again, you're yeah. talking about a jury that's going to do this, right? That may or may not know all these minutiae about training, and if you start touting all this training, and it could, I could see it going that way in a criminal court with a jury. Right. You're depending upon 12 people. And so are those 12 people going to say, well, if he had all this training, why didn't he just shoot him in the leg? You know, why did he why did he just shoot him in the shoulder? Why didn't he shoot him in some kind of non-lethal place? The ignorance of people is going to get you in a civil because at that point, it's it's a, it's a majority it's a majority. You don't have to get all right. twelve. Jurors and I'm not saying. And I'm not saying. I'm not saying training is to cause you criminal or civil problems. What I'm saying is, I don't think it's an issue. I think it's a non-issue. I think training or not, if you're in a defensive situation, you're going to go through a process regardless. And if you're justified and you have, there's no collateral damage, and you know you were justified in what you did. You didn't put anybody else in harm's way. It was again the defensive posturing. It was clear by the witnesses there that you you were doing everything within your power to stop that threat, not harm anybody else in the process. Then mm. odds are you're going to walk out of that courtroom without any problem, regardless of whether you have training or not. You would hope. You would hope. Uh, Doc's out there. Snobs out there. Ozzy's out there. So they must have gotten lost. I don't know how they, right. they they must have thought this was somebody else's 
Uh, but welcome, 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 welcome. So, yeah, that's kind of the interesting thing. And that, that was where I was kind of going because I said the reason why I thought it was an interesting thought process was because the words that we use could be misconstrued for so many different things. The word need, the word tactical, you know, there are so many different things that the words how people interpret those words, how people utilize those words, what people perceive certain things being, I think that that's where a lot of people get into the problems of of training in general, which much less if it's tactical training or not, but training in general, they have this thought of what it is, what it means, and, and all of that. And like I said, there you, you, you change a word in there. You change a a meaning of what you perceive that word to be versus someone else two completely different meanings of that well, word. And that let point. me, and let me ask you this. Sure. If, if somebody goes and I mean, they, you got somebody and they go to every training class, they're committed to learning. They practice sure. everything every day. Does that necessarily mean that they're going to be at the top of their game in the situation that arises that they have to defend themselves or their family? Absolutely not. And it also doesn't mean that they're able, actually capable of doing any of this stuff. You can be taught. Pulling the trigger on another human is a serious thing. Uh, it is. And, and, and you're, go ahead, finish that. Go ahead. Oh, that's all I was going to say. I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir with you and half the guys out there that served in the military, but, you know, or law enforcement. But, you know, I understand that. You know, mm. pulling the trigger on somebody and putting them down is that's something I'm, I'm going to have to live with the rest of my life. I understand that. Right now at the end yeah. of the day, I've got to do what I've got to do, mm -hmm. but you know, I full well know at this point, that's something I will have to live with the rest of my life. And I, and I hope that I hope and pray the time never comes that I have to deal with that the rest of my life. Right. But you know, when I do, I hope I've made the appropriate decisions, right? to the point that I can live with it the rest of my life, if that makes sure. any sense. And, and, and I want to piggyback onto that saying, once again, I, I, I'm an advocate for training. I don't, I'm never going to say everyone needs training. I think that everyone would benefit from training. Okay. I'll say that, but benefit, whether they, they need it or not is a different, once again, it's a term being used. I, I think that someone going in could benefit from training that's going to take it seriously and all of that. Listen to what's being said. Try to learn all they can. That being said, I'm going to pick it back on what you're saying. Mm -hmm. If you remember a couple months ago, I got thrashed. Is there on this show or someone else's show for saying the comment that I would much rather you not carry if you're not willing to pull that trigger? Yep. Remember that? Yep. I know oh, yeah. yeah. a lot of people and that, I want to piggyback on what you're saying because pulling a trigger against a human being is a completely different thing than it is pulling it on a silhouette target. Let's just be real about it. And well, going into that is if, if you've never been in a situation where you've learned how to deal with shooting with accelerated heart rate, shooting with adrenaline, shooting from behind cover, shooting in different scenarios, and then, like you said, then just pulling a trigger on paper and trying to get that precise shot, then if you've never done that, then how are you going to be able to make that shot in real life? That's where I think that training comes into uh, into the factor is it's teaching you a skill and techniques that hopefully will allow you to make that decision and make those decisions quickly and still be safe. So there you and, go. And yeah. it is piggybacking on that. And I've said this before. There you go. I think as go. a hunter, as someone who has taken a life, mm -hmm. I think I am equally or maybe even better prepared for that specific of the situation than those that want to go take training every other every weekend or every other weekend. Why? Because I've actually stopped a heartbeat. Okay. I've done it. I know well, what it feels it like. I know what it feels like. Now, that animal was a nuisance, you know, causing harm oh, or he's in my freezer and I'm going to eat him because he tastes good. But I know what it's like to stop a heartbeat. Did that heartbeat have a gun pointing at you? Did they have the ability to shoot back? No, but that's even worse in some in some aspects. You know what I'm saying? It's where the it's where the animal rights will go. Well, you just killed a defenseless little animal, right? So yeah, it it, it would be. I think it would be. 
it's it's definitely something I'm gonna have to deal with because it's something as a hunter that 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 first time, I, I think you're probably psychotic if you you know start killing shoot not killing shooting rabbits at you know or, or squirrel at eight ten years old and you get a kick out of it or something <laughs> you know yeah. it's, it's enjoyable hunting's enjoyable but you understand the circle of life and you know. Why? I don't know. Game management, you know, yeah, game management, know. why you're doing it. You get that. But what I'm saying is, and I got off track there, but no, it's so good. That's what this is all about. You know, what I'm saying is that animal, no, that animal's not shooting back at me, but mentally that's even a, a can, could be even a worse situation for people because, you know, and if you can do that, then I've got, I really, I do. I have no doubts that, you know, when the time comes and, if the time comes, because God, I hope it doesn't. Hope it never does. That right you know, that is gonna be training, experience, whatever. That's gonna lead me to do what I got to do to walk away at the end of the day, or for my family to walk away at the end of the day. Um, man, I tell you what, uh, mountain cats out there. Um, we also had someone else popped in. I can't remember who it was. But yeah, it's, else busy. it's busy in the chat. It is busy. And, they're and, all and riled up, man. They're all they're riled, riled, riled up. up. Hell yeah. Um, no, and, and like I said, and, and this is just something where this is a conversation that is being taken place along, all over the place. Two people that believe in it and two people and another person that I'm not saying you don't believe in training. You just don't think it's as necessary as I do. And that's okay. The formal, um, capacity, the formal capacity is what, well, two things, the formal capacity and the people without thinking that just blurt out that, Oh, if you all oh, firearm owners need training, these new firearm owners, they need training. You need to buy your firearm, you know, and the next thing you need to do is go get training, you know, and that's, that's dangerous because, with what politicians and stuff want to do, you know, they, they are, they've already done it in some places to where it's like, Oh, you want a gun? That's cool. Now you gotta, you know, go take this Man, class. Course, you can't have course, it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I get it. Um, and, and on the two way side of the political side of things, uh, 100% agree that we, once again, we're talking about words and specific changing of words need versus, um, should get or may want to look at getting versus need to get. Um, once again, these words can change uh, meanings and, and change the whole idea of what people are trying to say. And um, Mountain Cat out there says, uh, been a minute. The word tactical has been used a lot. Has there been a definition tactical for this conversation? That's the whole point is we've gone through what I think are – the way that it's being used, I think the way that it, it is being misunderstood versus how I particularly see the word tactical. Um, and it's just one of those things where I, I think that um, the word tactical is in our community, in our niche, is one of the most misused words, misunderstood words, because people use it in my opinion, wrong a lot. They use it without really kind of knowing what tactics means and and, um, and all that. They think that it's tactical. If you just do a, a search on Google for tactical and just hit images, it's going to be the guy kitted up. It's going to be the guy with 17 different things on his battle rifle that he doesn't even know how to use, but it looks damn cool. Um so um, I just got some Chinese guys saying hello on LinkedIn. Fantastic. Yay. That's the same uh, as more, uh, product, man. Probably. Uh, I'll send them to Calaveras or someone, you know. Right. Anyways, um, so, yeah, it's just one of those things where um, the word, the words, you know, if you think about, sit back and think about the words and what they mean or what they could mean or, or the words that you're using, are you using the word terminology, the word, the wrong terminology when you're describing a certain thing? It's it's interesting because once again, even you and I piggybacked off of each other off three or four things, mm -hmm. knowing where each other of us are going, but we could flip it on each other just on the terminology yeah, being we, used. We just have we don't necessarily disagree. No, we, no, we just no. have a totally different perspective. 
that's and, right. and that's and that's the issue that you get into that you know at the end of the day i mean it's great to have conversations like this because you bring different perspectives into it we don't you know it, it it's it's not necessarily a disagreement a lot of people from outside looking in on this would think that okay you and i are disagreeing on some things not really it's just we it's two different perspectives and how we're looking at it that's right um no doubt about it and <laughs> so um well, before I go into the funny one, JMA's right. Sitting in a meeting room and getting a, a briefing on what's going on, putting together your plan and all of that, that's tactical. You know, that's you, you're talking about movements of of, of troops, of, of teams, of a platoon, of a company, of a battalion, whatever it is, at whatever level you are. Movements with communications where you're going to rally up with another team over here. If my fire team's working on something, we have to have a, a rally point to meet up with the rest of our platoon. That's set beforehand. We got to know where, um, I mean, we have to know where even, all that stuff is. So that that is part of the tactical side of things, communications and all that. And you don't even have to apply tactical or, or tactics because, you know, that's what you started off by talking about the root, you know, tactics. Yeah, I've, I've used tactics, tactics in competition, especially 3D archery, many, 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 many times. There were no tactics doubt. I employed to increase my odds of winning. I've, I've and, coached and like, like, like JMA. I guess JMA is saying out there, or whatever. I guess that was him or whatever, wasn't it? Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you think about that going into the match. You know, you think about okay, what's what's going to give me the advantage, the upper hand? Mm, okay. You study the layout of the match. You look, okay, I need to shoot this, 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 and do or do this, this, and this, right? And you go in and you execute that plan. Yeah, uh, Mario's out there. What's up? What's up? Uh, affordable Armory's out there. We just had a little talk about you know um, training and different terminology and how it's being used and all that. Uh, let's go back to Patriot. Patriot says, can we go back to the first topic? Elmer Fudd, he believes, didn't wear eye pro or ear pro. Thoughts? I'm going to go to our local Fudd uh, expert. And and what do you say about Elmer Fudd not wearing ear or eye pro? It was a travesty. So Bugs Bunny also stuck his finger in the barrel of a shotgun many, many True. times. And True. Elmer Fudd and don't bring, and the don't bring up the coyote and how many mistakes the coyotes oh made. Yeah, this right. whole life mistake, you know. Right. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, maybe that's why they took his gun away from him. He was unsafe with it. So they're like, hey, we got to take your gun away now. You're you 50 years of being unsafe. Elmer Fudd finally lost his gun privileges. That could be a positive thing, right? Uh yep, yep, yep. Uh, um gathering intelligence. Yeah. Most definitely. I like this one. Tactical is kind of the civilian equivalent of military spec. <laughs> there's a lot to be said. Of, there, there's some truth to that. There's no doubt. There's some definite truth to that. Uh, let's see here. Um, I don't know about the whole military. Military spec worries me. You know, people talk about military grade and this, that, and the other. And I'm like, is military grade really that great? I mean, think you, about some of that. That's the, that's the thing. You're talking about uh, military grade. You're talking about something that was made by the lowest bidder. Right. You know, commercial grade, you know, I think, okay, an industry is using that to make money, to make profits. to, And if people don't like it or if it breaks, they're going to get sued and they're going to, they're, it's not going to sell, right? For commercial. Right. But you know, you use that in firearms term, mil spec's a big thing. You're like, oh, it's mil spec. It's like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> so I, I was talking with a friend of mine who's, um, anyways, um, I was talking to him the other day on the phone and talking about military grade and all that. And I said, you know, he said, well, I want something that is like military grade, something that you guys would have used and all that. I said, like, no, you don't. Um, you want something that's contractor grade. You want to find out what the best shit out there is? Yeah. Go watch the contractors. Why? Because they're going to go buy the best stuff that's available. Why? Because they're going to build that to their client. They're not paying for it out of their pockets, and it's not a military contract that's going to get whatever they can get for the cheapest price. The contractors are going to go get the best stuff that they can get, and they're going to bill it to the client, so they're not paying for it. So you want to find out what the best stuff out there truly is? Go find out what the, the contractor guys are using. Honestly, that's that's 
that's really where it's at is those guys are going to use the best stuff out there because they can. I would agree with that. So, yeah, you can look to the competition world a little bit too. Honestly. Yeah, absolutely. No doubt about it. Yep, absolutely. No maybe doubt about not, it. You're find out. Maybe not the, maybe not the uh, souped up model or whatever, you know what I mean? But the base model of some of those competition firearms, um, you know, they, they obviously they started with a, with a solid foundation before they built them into their competition rigs. Yeah. Um, I want to come here. Booger dogs says Elmer was running impingement. Not, I'm going to say he's probably mean piston. Yeah. So, uh, got blood. He got blackface. So, uh, not, uh, black powder and all that. So, um, yeah, it's one of those things where, um, you can definitely tell, and, and I, I'm another one. I've been watching the last couple of days. Do you remember the show um, Burn Notice? Yeah, I've never watched it, but yeah. Um, I watched maybe like the a few episodes here and there, and I always liked it, but I never did watch it. But it's on um, Prime Video now, Amazon Prime. So I've been watching a little bit of it. And it's kind of funny. And you watch TV shows or movies, and you can tell the people that have never – had training or been around firearms and you can tell the movies or shows that don't take firearms handling as consultants seriously right um because their trigger discipline's terrible their movement's terrible nothing that they do is right and it's you know a guy's clearing the house with his finger on the trigger and it, it, it's, it's, you know, it's not even it's not even firearms. I mean, I'm sure there's people out there that are into all kinds of things that see sure. discrepancies. But nitpick, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. But, a, a, uh, a car guy is going to pick out yeah. discrepancies in cha car oh, chases. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I do that occasionally. I'm not a huge car buyer, but occasionally. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I've been watching Longmire, and I can tell yeah, my wife is so tired of me because single action, whether it's a lever action rifle or 1911, but a single action firearm that fires with the hammer down. Hmm. They're like, uh, yeah. or they're, they're in a standoff, right? Yeah. And it's the, the tension builds and somebody's going to fire first and they're in a standoff and one of them has their hammer down. And I'm like, well, that guy's dead. He's you know, done. But, yeah, but yeah, next, thing no out, next thing comes yeah. out. He's fine. He's yeah. all right. He, you know, he shot. He's not going to win that gun. That, I don't, that, know. That gun I don't know how he cocked the hammer back and got, you know, in that length of time. I don't know how he done that. But I tell you another thing that, and, and we weren't but a few episodes in, but there was a episode where this this guy, this kid or whatever, was killing. Maybe it was a guy. I don't even remember now. Was killing people with a uh, with a bow and arrow, right? And yeah. they were trying to figure out the distance. They figured out about where he was at. They was trying to figure out what kind of bow it was. And they go out to this guy that's supposedly a hunting expert, you know, and all this other stuff. And he gives them a recurve. And he says, now the range on this is blah, 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 blah. And my God, the way he's shooting that recurve, I don't know how he could hit the broad side of a barn. And he said, but I think more likely what he was using was this compound bow. Now here, get back at 40 yards. And even the novice first time user can hit, could hit a body size target at 40 yards. I'm thinking, well, you have apparently never shot archery. 40 yards in archery is a pretty darn good shot. Even to hit a body, just saying. Forty yards with a with a with a handgun and hitting a silhouette is not necessarily easy for a beginner. You know, uh, there's no way. I, I put it this way: very few beginners could take a Glock and at forty yeah. yards hit a silhouette. Well, but that and that plays into a lot of what we're talking about. Honestly, I mean, it yeah. kind of did we get off the rails here? But you know, not really yeah, because. We can bring it all back around. You know, it, it goes back into what, you know, I was saying earlier, are, are you dealing with somebody that never watched a movie, played a video game? You know, some of that stuff translates mm -hmm. over. And, and especially if you, if you have enough education with firearms that you start noticing those things, I think that's, I think that's a big deal. You start noting the little, those and the little minutiae and you key in on that kind of stuff, even watching TV. Um, that could potentially translate in, in, into a because it's going to come down to some details and your fine motor skills and all of that when you get into a scenario, I think are they're going to go out the window for, for the mass yeah. majority of people. You know what I mean? So yeah. even being able to train to pick up on stuff like that real quickly on TV shows, I think could be a benefit. 
Yeah, FNH says depends on if the silhouette is low left or not. Very, very true. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, I, and I've, I've told you this, and a lot of people know this about me. It pains me to say this. Um, so if you're a squid out there, um, you're going to like me for a few minutes. My favorite TV show right now is SEAL Team. And it's not because it's the greatest acting in the world or anything like that. Um, but the, the 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 consultants that they have on that show on the movements, the weapons handling and all of that, they're spot on. They've got unit guys, berets, rangers, uh, marines and seals that are all doing this. As a matter of fact, Tyler Gray is an actor on that show, and he was brought in as a consultant because he was a former – he was either a unit guy or a beret. I can't remember, but he's one of the two. Brought him in as a consultant to worry about team movements and, and firearm handling, and he's now an actor on the show, like a full-time um, person on the show, which is kind of awesome. But I, I like that show because they take the handling and the movement seriously. I mean, that's that's – it and 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 I, I follow some of the guys now that are on that show on Instagram because they're all into guns now, and they're all training once again training, but they're all doing stuff with firearms now um, that I don't think that many of them were gun people prior to the show, but they've gotten into it because they had to do it so much and to, to perfect a handling side. Of it. I think they've enjoyed. They realize, man, this stuff's fun, you know. Um, so it's kind of it's kind of cool to see that stuff. Um, Jacob says, uh, NCIS and CSI love NCIS. I never was a CSI guy. I never really did watch it. Um, let's see here. Uh, your real weapon is the one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Your brain. So absolutely. Um, what was the movie that came out a few years back when they were doing halo jumps like over in Yuma? Halo jumps in Yuma. Was it? I, I don't know. I don't know what that movie would be. Um, Yuma's, I mean, how would you know? It's a fucking desert. Um, anyways, but yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm sure it's this movie that I've probably heard of or probably seen, but I don't remember Halo jumps over Yuma. So I don't know. So anyway, we've been going for an hour and 45. Holy hell. Um, Clover, do you have anything that you want to kind of tie up this subject up and, and all of that? Anything Not you want to bring really. up? You know, I think you know, I'll say what you say all the time. I think you need to get out on the range and you need to practice and be proficient and shoot. And you need to be thinking about those scenarios and ways that you can practice and train for those scenarios and, and all of that. I think that's, you know, one of the biggest things. And, you know, with ammo being short now, if you got to do it, dry fire, do it, dry fire, you know, whatever, yeah. you know, practice, practice, draw, practice, like you talk about conceal and cover and, and all that kind of stuff and do it, dry fire if you have to. Yeah. And, and, and do me a favor if you're out there and if you're going to the range and you're doing a practice, put yourself in positions or scenarios that are uncomfortable to you. And sometimes I'm just talking about doing 25 jumping jacks, running in place for 30 seconds, doing 20 push ups, and then shoot your gun and see you know how you shoot in comparison when you're just static and, and you, you're you're everything's great versus bad weather windy weather and you're doing jumping jacks or you're doing something that's gonna get that heart rate up you, you, you have to, how much you have to, to figure that out you have to get out of that mindset because you know especially if you do if you do a lot of competition stuff you have to get out, you know, I call it combat accuracy. You have to get out of a precision mindset and, you know, holes in the bullseye and that, you know, are those shots on target? You know, yeah. are those are those hits? Don't worry about points. Don't worry about, is that a hit? You know, um, because at the end of the day, you know, you lose fine motor skills, you know, you got stress, you've got, like you're talking about, all these other factors come into play you're likely not going to be able to stack them in a bullseye anyway. So, you know, don't be, don't be hard on yourself. You know, if you're six, eight inch group at, at 10 yards, big deal, you know, big freaking whoop. Um, right. But 
was another there was another point that I was gonna make with with going out too. Um, dang, what was it? Well, while you're thinking of that, uh, a shout out to Stephen. Uh, I'm gonna butcher it. I apologize. Um, Fargy, Fargy, I, Stevens out there said first time to your channel. Love the chat. Just subscribe. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Uh, welcome to the dark side. Sounds fancy, whatever, however it's pronounced. Yeah, that Fair, sounds like, like Frank or something. A fancy boy, a fancy Stephon, boy. Mm. Stefan Fairshay. I like it. Stefan. <laughs> Stefan. That's his nickname from now on. Come back to the channel. Okay. We love you. So Stefan's one of my favorite characters ever from Saturday Night Live. Uh, was it Bill Hader? Was it Bill Hader? Who who did Stefan the the uh, guy on Weekend Update that showed all the clubs that in uh, New York? You know who I'm talking about? Was it Stefan? Yeah, I don't I think know. It was, it was Stefan. I don't know. Anyways, yeah, I don't uh, remember. Yeah. Um, all right. So Elder out there is another Stefan. Says, worst feeling in the world is be standing there with your weapon and see a guy looking down the barrel or scope. Um, here's the thing I understand the sentiment of that, but if I'm the guy looking down the scope, I'm not going to give the guy the opportunity to look at me and say, hmm, that's not good. He's going to be done before he gets a chance to even know where I'm. Hopefully, yeah, he's never going to see me coming. Yeah. Or, the, or the bullet coming. That's just me. Um, let's see here. Patriot says, do 50 pull up, do 50 pull ups, 50 sit ups, call your ex, or 50 sit ups and then shoot. Mm-hmm. Uh, call your ex, I think, might get your adrenaline and, and your heart rate up a little, little bit. Um, so, yeah. Um, let's see here. You know, we don't talk about, we. one thing we haven't mentioned this whole thing is by practicing and everything offhand as well, or, or we can. Not all oh, man. absolutely. No yeah. doubt. No doubt. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's something to it. I mean, and, and you know, as well as I do, when you, if you shoot competition, there's going to be at least one stage. Typically in most competitions, it's going to force you to shoot weak hand, uh, especially if you're doing IDPA. I can guarantee you an IDP is going to make you shoot weak hand at least maybe two or three or five rounds in a stage of, of weak hand. I will say that you can practice slash or train um, all you want under ideal circumstances. Um, and I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm going to take that a step further from what you said. What if you get shot in your strong hand or strong arm and you've never manipulated that weapon? We can't. You never had to rack a slide one hand, especially with your weak hand. But I'd even say what if your, your weak hand gets hurt and you're going single-handed, you know, strong hand. Well, let's See, take it. Either way, you've got to be able to manipulate that fire. You got to be able to clear a jam. You so, should be able to reload with one hand. Yeah. Go ahead. So, so let's take let's take the the weekend to you know a, a very plausible scenario that has nothing to do with even getting shot. So you're in a mall situation. Uh, let's say Black Friday. Let's say you know Christmas rush. You know, but whatever three day sale, J C Penny, whatever it might be. Right. Pop pop stampede people going everywhere going crazy you get knocked down and you break your wrist or you strain or you sprain your wrist or you now all these people have basically trampled you and broken your arm or whatever and homeboy is still pop popping and you not only do you have to shoot from the ground but at this time you got to shoot from the ground weak handed yeah uh people People around me in everyday life, I get asked every now and then. I think people get nervous asking because they know that they know that I'm a Marine, so they they figure when they see my belt, well, my buckle isn't gig lined up. It's not centered. It's off to the side, right. and I and I always wear my belt off the side. Um. And people will sit there and say, well, I thought Marines were supposed to be, you know, yeah. I wear my belt off the, off this, the buck off the side because if I have to one hand manipulate, that's what I use to rack that slide or clear that jam, to clear that malfunction. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is, I use that buckle to manipulate that. And it's easier if it's off to the side. So it's just one of those things where, um, once again, if you're going to practice, 
don't just practice the perfect scenarios, perfect situations, perfect weather, perfect everything. Put yourself in positions that you think might not ever happen and just see how you handle them. Just yeah. see how you handle them. Well, you know, there was some, um, I think there was some talk out there in the chat and it was, it, it was what I was going to hit on. I remember what I was going to say. And while you're out on the range, if you can do this, you know, set up your phone or set up something and film yourself. Um, oh, yeah. you would be, you would be amazed at what you can learn and pick up by just, and I'm not saying post it to YouTube or publicly or do anything like that. Even, uh, heck delete it once you get done watching it, but you'd be surprised at the little things you can learn and pick up on just by watching yourself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> F and H says, uh, what if you load your AR 15 with an orange earplug though? Uh, well, shouldn't cause any adverse effects it just might not it do what you want really to. really quiet yeah that's hollywood silent right there oh, yeah. um now honcho wants to know what if you have your blank adapter on it that would not be good um if you load your ar and you still have your and people may not realize when, when you're shooting blanks and all that there's like a metal thing that goes over the muzzle and um uh, but yeah, if you load a live round with that, that that's not going to work out great for everybody. So, um, yeah, wouldn't do that. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Patriot says you should record yourself at the range and upload it to YouTube and say you're in a you're in a professional, <laughs> and then read the comments to learn what you're doing wrong. No doubt. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you want to find out what you're doing wrong, put a video up on YouTube and everyone will tell you how wrong you are about everything. So that's all good. Yep. Yeah, I love it. All right, brother. Uh, I've been a couple hours. We're five minutes short of five, uh, two hours. So we'll, we'll clear this up. But go all ahead right. and uh, tell people where you are. Plug. It's been a great two hours. I have no idea it's been two hours. It's just, a good conversation is a good conversation. But um, oh, yeah. tell people where they can find you and, and all that good stuff. Uh, clovertack.com you know that i'm everywhere so yeah do you have um you gonna have your show to, uh thursday night and friday you can have the podcast on friday as far as i'm aware yeah everything's still going down as scheduled so i gotta get uh i gotta get another video out probably tomorrow maybe it's smith and wesson 617 here Guys, pick up some paint today. Been playing around with the front sight and trying to figure out what color I want to get on the paint on mm -hmm. it. Um, I want to, God, I want to get it out and play with it because I think it's it's I think it's bad to the bone uh, from what I have played with it so far. So I need to get a video done on it for sure. Yeah, uh, super five JMA, appreciate you, brother. Um, let's see here. Yeah, and. Um, so Thursday is after hours. If you are thinking about doing YouTube, whether it's a hobby or a business, or are you already are and, and really are having problems or asking questions, it doesn't matter what the topic is Thursday night. The whole idea of Clover's Thursday night after hours chat is talking about um, the tech side or the behind, not necessarily just talking about how to do a video, but thumbnails or cameras or analytics and all that so whatever the topic will be thursday if you're a creator out there or thinking about becoming a creator and you have questions that's the show to go fire on friday is always a good one i do want to plug a couple other shows for some friends of ours that are out there uh here in about two or three minutes when you leave here go over to sand hill shooter uh it's called sand hill shooter that's his channel and he's got the get off my lawn podcast tell him go sent you good great podcast you'll enjoy it if you're new to it let them be out there say go sit me over here uh but john's a great guy uh budget guns and gear reviews go check out budget friday night at 11 30 eastern unless he's working or whatever but friday nights at 11 30 p.m eastern over at budget budget guns and gear reviews he has the right of the people phenomenal show i love that show um i wish i wish i could join it that's just late enough on a friday because usually saturdays are crazy busy at work right. so i usually i'll i'll put the earplugs in and i'll lay down in bed listening to it hoping that he doesn't get too fired up to where it wakes me up but uh great show go check that one out um i tell you what f and h man you're on my good side look at this this guy is shilling for the 
He said, got some spares, some spares, some change. Yeah, we do have Patreon. You want to go over there and check us out? Um, we we appreciate that. Thanks to all my patrons out there. Thanks to Rod Shelley Gates, the gun cleaners, great friends of the channel. Uh, thanks to Sportsman's Guide. Sportsman's Guide is a huge uh, part of what we're able to do. Um, and Grim's out there. Yeah, Grim is putting out the link. Uh, youtube.com um, that is i believe that would probably be the link to the get off my lawn podcast that starts here up any minute now um, and then we we got to say something about our good friend patriot um, patriot of the darks out there is a fellow marine good friend of the channel great guy um, and, and i'm not going to give it away well actually he kind of did didn't he well damn it you're not supposed to do that uh, i would say Great gun content from a very different and unique um, perspective that you're not going to see from other gun channels. But uh, Patriot's blind, uh, hence the name Patriot in the Dark. But he's blind, so if you're interested, really cool content. Um, go check out Patriot. Go check out G23. He's got a show on Saturday nights. Go check out uh, man, who all was in here? Snobs got a great channel. Obnoxious got a great channel. Uh, Gary Gizzard Gary's out there. He's got a great channel. JMA's got a channel, but he does a lot of different martial arts stuff, not necessarily gun stuff. Um, who else was out there? Mario was out there. Go check him out. Uh, am I missing anyone that kind of came in that's actually a creator that I need to, to plug while we're here? Can't I remember know. anyone else. No, I think we got most everybody. Oh, There's so many, man, which is awesome. Yeah, we need more. We need more. We need more. Um but yeah, thanks for everyone out there watching live. If you're watching or listening to this and replay, God bless you two hours of listening to me and Clover ramble on. Uh, we hope that it wasn't uh, a waste of your time. I can't I can't give you the time back, but hopefully it was worth it for you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, like I said, utilize the comment section below. We will see you soon. And uh, I can't remember who we got a guest coming on next Tuesday. And I, honest to God, I don't remember who it is. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> It happens, so uh, be looking for the thumbnails, and I'll be obviously doing some uh, the couple of days ahead of time, doing some some marketing and advertising for next week. So we got someone coming on. And I think I'm excited about it. So it's got to be someone cool. Let's get who it is. But anyways, uh, make sure you come check his back out live next Tuesday, right here, same bat channel, same bat time, all that good stuff. We'll see you soon. Super five.